Welcome, my name is Deborah Walker, and I'm speaking to you from Revival from Down Under, which is a Christian church located in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne, Australia. I'd like to welcome you all here today, and those watching online, delighted to have you with us. And today I'd like to speak on, do we have ears that hear? I've got a diagram here, and it says here, that's the name of our topic. Do we have ears that hear? We've all got ears. But are those the ears, you know, we hear with our natural ears. Sorry, we listen with our natural ears, but do we hear? So do we have ears that hear? And what do we need to be hearing? God's word. And, you know, God loves people and he desires his word to come to pass in their life. And I'm just going to open my King James Bible to Isaiah 64. Isaiah 64. And we read here, and verse 4. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither has the eye seen, O God, besides thee, what he has prepared for him that waits for him. God has much prepared for those that wait for him. And this is reinstated in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And it says here in verse 9, But as it is written, so we just read where it was written in Isaiah, Eye has not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. All right, so we just if we just love him, God's got it all prepared. Praise God. And because God loves people, he's given us his word, the Bible, which is going to be fulfilled. And he wants us to be part of what God's going to do in the earth. And in the Gospels, we read what Jesus says often. He said, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. And so although we have natural ears, Jesus is talking about hearing with our spiritual ears in our heart. And another word for hearing, which is used extensively throughout the Old Testament, is the word hearken. And that word hearken in the Hebrew, because the Old Testament was Hebrew, it means to hear intelligently, attentively, carefully, to listen and to hear. And the word hearken, actually, it's also mentioned in the New Testament, which was originally Greek, and then it was translated into English. And that word hearken in the New Testament means to hear and to understand it's one thing to hear but God wants us to hear and understand and uh, in first second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 it says all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness so God has given us all scripture and all scriptures both the Old Testament and the New Testament and that word profitable when we study from all scripture, the word profitable means it's for our advantage. And a key to understanding all scripture is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I'll read it. It's a principle God put in and it's a real, if you can get hold of this, this will unlock so many scriptures for you. And it says in verse, chapter 15, verse 44, we'll start there. And it says, it is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last, Adam, was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven, as is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. All right. We were all born from natural Adam, from the seed of Adam. But when we were born again, that's when we truly received Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We have that experience called born again and we are born of the Spirit. And why do we need to be born again? Because turn back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And it says in here in verse 14, it says, But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. 
And the Amplified says, But the natural, non-spiritual man does not accept or welcome or admit into his heart the gifts and teachings and revelations of the Spirit of God, for they are folly, meaningless nonsense to him. And he is incapable of knowing them, of progressively recognizing understanding and becoming better acquainted with them because they are spiritually discerned and estimated and appreciated. All right. God's word. Yes, it has a lot of history in it, but it is a spiritual book and we need the Holy Spirit. We need the spirit of God to unlock spiritual understanding of the Bible. And Jesus is God, the word, and only the word can cause us to hear. It says in Romans 10 verse 17, so faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. For our faith to be strong, we need to have ears that hear the word of God. Faith doesn't come any other way, only by the, Holy, only by the word of God. Testimonies are encouraging and they create hope. But faith comes, faith grows when we hear the word of God. And natural Israel are our example. And it says, uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. Now all these things happened unto them as an examples. And they're written for our admonition of whom the ends of the world are come. And so natural Israel are an example to us. And the word, what happened to natural Israel is an admonition. And that means a warning to us. And natural Israel are a warning to spiritual Israel. If there's a natural, that principle we were just read, if there's a natural, there's a spiritual, there's a natural Israel, there is a spiritual Israel. And again, that word hearken in the Old Testament means to hear intelligently, attentively, carefully, to listen and to hear. So let's just turn back to Deuteronomy chapter 11. Deuteronomy, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy chapter 11. And we read here in verses 13 to 14. And this is what the Lord says. And it shall come to pass if you shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, that I will give you rain in your land in his due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thine oil. Spiritually, rain symbolizes the word of God and not the Holy Spirit. And God's word interprets itself. It says in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 2, My doctrine, so God's doctrine, shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb and as showers upon the grass. You know, when we hearken diligently, then God will give us a double portion of the rain, the word of God, and we will be fruitful because we just read there what's going to happen um, when we get the early and the latter rain. There'll be corn. So firstly, it says there will be uh, corn, and that's the word, word of God. There'll be wine, and that speaks of the life of God, and oil, which speaks of the anointing. So we, when there's double portion of rain, that's what be happening in our lives. The word, the life and the anointing. And in the Old Testament, we read that masters who had servants were required to release their servants from their service at the end of every seven years. However, some servants desired to remain with their masters. Let's turn to Deuteronomy chapter 15. And it says here in verse 1. At the end of every seven years, thou shalt make a release. And verse 12. And if thy brother, a Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman, be sold unto thee and serve thee six years, then in the seventh year, you shall let them go free from thee. All right. In verses 16 and 17, it says, And it shall be if he say unto thee, I will not go away from thee because he loves thee and thine house because he is well with thee, then thou shalt take an awl and thrust it through his ear and unto the door, and he shall be thy servant forever. And also unto thy maidservant thou shalt do likewise. All right. Get an awl. What's an awl? I've made a picture here. An awl. All right. 
an awl. It was a small tool used making small holes. It was like a sharp nail attached to a wooden handle. And the servant was brought to the door or the doorpost and the master would place the servant's ear up against the wood, the door of the door, and use the awl to bore a hole in his ear. And this custom meant that the servant was willing to give up his will to go free and instead surrender himself as a lifelong servant to his master. And that verse 16 and 17 in the Amplified says, But if thy servant say to thee, I will not go away from you because he loves you and your household since he does well with you, then take an awl and pierce his ear through to the door and he shall be your servant always. And also to your bondwoman, you shall do likewise. So praise God. So the servant's ear was pierced to the door. And who is the door? We read in John 10 verse 7, Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. And as servants of Jesus, we too are to always have our ear connected to serve Jesus the door. Praise God. I'm just going to turn to Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8. And it says here in verse 33, 34, Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that hears and watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. The Amplified says, Hear instruction and be wise and do not refuse or neglect it. Blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. You know, we are to hear instruction and gather the word of God daily. And Jesus was also pierced. He was nailed to the posts of the cross as he had come to do the Father's will and to serve, right? Those nails went right through his hands and his feet. He was nailed to the post. He came to serve. And Jesus, who is also God, the word was made flesh. And we know in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, and the word of God, let's just turn to it. Hebrews 4, verse 12, Hebrews 4, verse 12. And it says here, for the word of God is quick, that means it's alive and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the divining asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Praise God. God's word is alive and powerful and it pierces, it can penetrate the heart of man. The Amplified says, For the word of God that God speaks is alive and full of power, making it active, operative, energizing and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating to the dividing line of breath of life and soul and the immortal spirit and of the joints and marrow of the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and sifting, analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of the heart. You know, man may look on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. And people may put on a good show on the outside, but you can't fool God. God looks on everyone's heart. And God's word is powerful enough to enter into our heart to cause positive change in our heart, which will then cause positive change in our life. All right, if there's a natural priesthood, there's a spiritual priesthood. And there were priests that used to serve in the tabernacle. Let's turn back to Leviticus. Exodus Leviticus chapter 8 and uh, we see what we see what takes place regarding the priests serving in the tabernacle Leviticus chapter 8 verse 22 to 24 and it says here and he brought the other ram and the ram of consecration and Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram and he slew it and Moses took of the blood of it and put it on the tip of Aaron's right ear and upon the thumb of his right hand and upon the great toe of his right foot. And he brought Aaron's son and Moses put 
of the blood upon the tip of their right ear and upon their thumbs of their right hand and upon the great toes of their right foot. And Moses sprinkled the blood upon the altar round about. So where was the blood to be applied? On their right ear, what they were hearing. On their right thumb, what they were doing. And on their right toe, speaking of their walk. So as believers, we are all priests who are serving in God's church. Those priests served in the tabernacle. Well, we as servants of God are serving in God's church. And 1 Peter 2, chapter 5, it says, You also as living stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, that's us, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Christ Jesus. And verse 9 says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation of peculiar people that you should show forth the praise of him who's called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So a royal, we are royal priesthood. A royal priesthood is a king priest. And so God expects us as priests to hear, serve and walk before him all the days of our lives. And if we turn over to Psalm 138, Psalm 138, and it says here in verse 4, All the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord, when they hear the words of thy mouth. I'll read it again. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord, when they hear the words of thy mouth. As believers... We are the kings of the earth who are to hear God's word and praise him. Hallelujah. And Proverbs chapter 1, Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 33. It says here, But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. And the Amplified says, But whoso hearkens to me, wisdom, shall dwell securely and in confident trust, and shall be quiet without fear or dread of evil. Praise God. Again, that word hearkeneth means to hear intelligently, pay attention to. Um, it also means obedience to whoever hears. And Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, it says, Hear, ye children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. Attend means to give our attention to it. And verse 10, hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. What a great promise. When we hear God's word and walk in God's ways, we'll have a long life. Praise God. And down verse 20 and 22, it says, my son, that also includes daughters, right? Every, all believers, attend to my words. That means give our attention to God's word. Incline your ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes, but keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. I tell you, there's so many people that need healing. Well, if they'll just get hold of the promises in God's word, healing is available. God's word, when believed, brings health. Praise God. Proverbs chapter 7, it says here in verse 24, Hearken unto me now, therefore, O you children, and attend to the words of my mouth. What are we to be giving our attention to? The word of God. Proverbs 8, verse 32, it says, Now, therefore, hearken unto me, O you children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Praise God. And let's turn over to Isaiah 28. Isaiah 28. And verse 23, and it says, Give ye ear and hear my voice. Hearken and hear my speech. Right? Give you, give you ear, hear my voice. Hearken and hear my speech. And Isaiah 32, verse 9, and 9 to 11, it says here, Rise up, you women that are at ease. Hear my voice, you careless daughters, give ear unto my speech. Many days and years shall you be troubled, you careless women, for the vintage shall fail and the gathering shall not come. Tremble, you women, 
that are at ease. Be troubled, you careless ones, strip you and make you bare and gird sackcloth upon your loins. All right, in the Bible, women speak of churches. They can also speak of the false church, but this is actually speaking of people in churches, God's church worldwide. And we read an exhortation to God's churches, the women that are at ease. And we could also use the word lukewarm. And all believers need to rise up and be pressing into God. Isaiah 55. Verse 1 to 3, it says here, Ho, everyone that thirsts, come ye to the waters. And he that has no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labour for that which satisfies not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me here, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. So, you know, what are we seeking after? The food we are to be buying and eating is the word of God. That is the only thing that will feed our spiritual man. And the wine, of course, speaks of the life of God and the milk speaks of the word of God. And Jesus paid the price by his giving his life for us so that we can have access to the true life and the cost to buy the word is our self life. We have to spend time getting into the word, being around the word, being in church, hearing the word preached, listening to the word, watching the word videos, getting hold of the word because that's what feeds our spiritual man. And meanwhile, it's only God's true word that satisfies and brings life. Hallelujah. And just Jeremiah chapter 6. Regarding natural Israel, we read in Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 17. And I set watchmen over you saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. <laughs> what an attitude. Watchmen speak of God's ministries who are to blow the trumpet. The word of God, whether people hear or do not hear, just keep blowing the trumpet. Hallelujah. And Jeremiah chapter 7, we read a summary of what the Lord said to natural Israel. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 23 onwards, it says, But this thing commands I them, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people. And walk in all the ways that I've commanded you, that it may be well unto you. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and in the imaginations of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt, unto this day I have even sent unto you all my servants the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. Yet they hearkened not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to thee. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. But thou shalt say to them, This is a nation that obeyed not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receives correction. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. What a dreadful situation these people found themselves in. Instead of everything going well, they no longer inclined their ear. Their hearts were hardened and they would not obey the voice of the Lord. And neither would they receive correction or adjustment. Therefore, the truth perished and was no longer being spoken by them. And verse 28 in the Amplified says, Yet you say, shall say, this is the nation that did not obey the voice of the Lord their God or receive instruction and correction and warning. Truth and faithfulness have perished and have completely vanished from their mouths. They just went and did their own thing. They just hardened their heart. Even so, the Lord endeavors to reach natural Israel using the prophet Jeremiah chapter 11. God doesn't give up on anyone and neither should we. Chapter 11, verse 6 to 8, it says here, then the Lord said unto me, Proclaim all these words in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, saying, Hear, 
you the words of this covenant and do them. For I earnestly pro protested unto your fathers in the day that I brought them up out of the land of Egypt, even unto this day, rising early and protesting, saying, Obey my voice. Yet they obeyed not, nor inclined their ear, but walked every one in the imagination of their evil heart. Therefore, I will bring upon them all the words of this covenant, which I commanded them to do, but they did them not. You know, God desired to bless his people. However, God will not bless those who will not, will, who will not or refuse to hear or those who disobey. That just disqualifies people from being blessed by God because they refuse to hear and they won't obey. So what's the answer? It says in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 40, let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. You know, we might be on the wrong track. We might have a hardened heart. We might just be doing our own thing. But the Lord in his love for us just says, turn, turn again to the Lord. And so whatever the situation is, now is the time to turn again to the Lord and hear and obey his word. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Let's turn to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. And it says here, and this chapter, of course, we read about the blessings and the curses. But in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 and 2, it says, And it shall come to pass if you shall hearken. All right, so good things are going to come to pass if believers hearken. Diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which are commanded this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if you hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. The voice of the Lord your God is his word. God has given us his word. That's his voice. And it's speaking to us today. And then we read a warning in verse 15. And it says, But it shall come to pass if you will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. There will be consequences. And down in verse 45, some of these consequences are, it says, verse 45, Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. So we see that everything happened to natural Israel as an example to us, so we do not make the same mistakes that they did. And in Deuteronomy, just go back, Deuteronomy 18, just go back there, Deuteronomy 18 and verse 15, it says here, The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee, this is Moses saying, a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him you shall hearken. All right, the Lord's going to raise up a prophet that the people are going to listen to. Well, that prophet that all people are to listen to, his name is Jesus Christ. And it's, we can read this, Acts, just to, Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. 22, Acts, 20, Acts chapter 3, verse 22, 23, it says, For Moses truly said unto his fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you and of your brethren, like unto me, him shall you hear in all things whatsoever he shall sound you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. God doesn't want anyone to perish, but if people choose to ignore God, refuse God, unfortunately, there will be consequences. All right. There are natural and spiritual ears. Let's turn back to 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. And this is regarding the time of Elijah. And just in verse 41, we'll start there. And it says here, And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound, a sound. You hear things, don't you? There's a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. 
And he said to his servant, go up now, look towards the sea. That's the nations. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again seven times. And he came to pass on the seventh time that he said, behold, there's a rise a little cloud out of the sea. So whatever is heavenly is spiritual out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, go, go and say to Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get thee up that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind and there was a great rain and Ahab robe and went to Jezreel. All right, we read here that Elijah, he could hear the sound of an abundance of rain and he was hearing not with his natural ears, but with his spiritual ears. And this was before the cloud was even formed. Hallelujah. Before it was even formed or even seen. And again, spiritually, rain symbolizes the word of God not the Holy Spirit. And the cloud was in the shape of a man's hand. And God is preparing his fivefold ministry, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, to bring a great rain, a double portion of the word of God. Praise God. And we know Jesus, he used natural things to hide spiritual things from those that do not have ears to hear. And in the gospels, we read that Jesus often said to people, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. For example, let's turn over to Matthew chapter 11. Jesus said this often. I'm just going to read them. We don't have to turn to them all, but I'll just read them. Matthew 11 verse 15. It says here, Jesus said, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. The amplified of that verse says, he who has ears to hear, let him be listening and let him consider and perceive and comprehend by hearing. God doesn't want us just to hear with our natural ears. He wants us to really hear, get understanding, to really hear with our heart. Uh, Matthew 13, verse 9. It says here, Who has ears to hear? Let him hear. Verse 43. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who has ears to hear? Let him hear. Mark 4. Verse 9, it says, And he said unto them, He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Verse 23, If any man he has ears to hear, let him hear. Mark seven sixteen. If any man has ears to hear, let him hear. Luke 8, verse 8. Another fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that has ears to hear, let him hear. You know, Jesus gave a parable. And a parable is a natural example, hiding spiritual meaning. And regarding of the parable of the sower and the seed, just, just read a scripture here in Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. And just starting here. In verse 1, 1 to 3, it says, And he, Jesus, began to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the seat, sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and he said unto them in, he said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower, to sow. So there's that word hearken. That means listen up, pay attention, hear and understand. Let's just turn back to Matthew 13. And we're going to look at it there. Matthew 13. And we'll start in verse 1. And it says here, The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered unto him. So he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake unto them many things, in parables saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some seed fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, because they had no depthness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. 
but other fell on to good ground into good ground and brought forth fruit some a hundredfold some sixtyfold some thirtyfold verse 9 Jesus said who has ears to hear let him hear all right so we've got a, a sower got a sower and the sower he's scattering out seed watching this and he's putting it on the ground and there's some wayside ground which is quite hard and some seed went into stony ground which has got ground with lots of stones and rocks in it and there was some other ground that had weeds thorns growing in it right different types of ground and then there was other ground that we just read then that was good ground it's still the same sower the same seed but the good ground brought forth for 30 60 and 100 and you know what Jesus said if you understand this parable you'll understand all the parables in the Bible because this is a real key to understanding the parables praise God and so and then in verse 10 and 11 it says here and the disciples came and said unto him why speakest thou in parables and he answered to them because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven and to them it is not given I tell you if we want to press into God and when we press into God God will give you understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom of God and here we see that some are given understanding of what the parable means and some don't all right it's about our hearts pressing into God and the reason some people do not hear is because of the condition of their heart and Jesus went on to say in verse 15 for this people's heart is waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand in their hearts in their with their hearts and should be converted and I should heal them and Jesus said to his disciples in verse 16 but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear Je disciples of Jesus that's you and me have been given ears to hear and verse 18 hear you therefore the parable of the sower so Jesus is going to give understanding you know the disciples they heard with their natural ears what Jesus said naturally I mean he just told them the story about the sower and the seed but they had not truly understood the spiritual content which was hidden within what he said and so Jesus continued to give them understanding and meaning of the parable and then Jesus goes on to explain the seed is the word of God and the ground is the heart and so then Jesus opened their spiritual eyes and ears so they could understand as he expounded and explained to them the parable let's just read on verse 19 and it says here when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understands it not then comes the wicked one and catches away that which was sown in his heart this is that which receives seed by the wayside their hearts are hard but he that receives seed into stony ground places the same as he that hears the word and anoint and, and with joy receives it yet has no root in himself but dureth for a while and when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word by and by he's offended he also that receives seed among the thorns is he that hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it becomes unfruitful but he that receives seed into the good ground is he that hears the word and understands it which also here bears fruit and brings forth some a hundred and some sixty and some thirty so depending on the ground right the ground is the heart right there's hard hearts stony hearts thorny hearts other things more important in their life than God too busy to read their Bible too busy to pray too busy doing too many social things rather than pressing into God thorny ground just a mixture and this person's so hard their hearts are hard the word just bounces off the enemy just it doesn't even penetrate and yet they're all hearing the same sower but it's a heart condition it's a heart condition however we do have good ground here I'll read it from um, the Amplified it says here in verse 19 while anyone is hearing the word so right now you are hearing this word when anyone hears the word and what you hear is going to depend on your heart 
verse 19, when anyone is hearing the word of the kingdom and does not grasp or understand it, comprehend it, the evil one comes and snatches away that which was sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the roadside. And as for what is sown on the thin rocky soil, this is he who hears the word and at once welcomes it and accepts it with joy, yet has no real root in himself, but is temporarily inconstant, lasts but a little while. And when affliction or trouble or persecution comes on account of the word, at once he is caused to stumble. He is repelled and begins to distrust and desert him whom he ought to trust and obey, and he falls away. And as for what was sown among thorns, this is he who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the pleasures and the delight and the glamour and the deceitfulness of riches choke and suffocate the word and it yields no fruit. As for what is sown on good soil, this is he who hears the word and grasps and comprehends it. He indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundred times as much as sown, in another 60 times as much and in another 30. All right, so back here we are onto the ground. All right. So the first three grounds produced nothing. Life in God, nothing. They might say they're a Christian, but there's no fruit in their life backing it up. They don't, there's just no fruit. They don't, just, there's nothing happening there. But they, you know, some people just say, well, I'm a Christian. But Jesus said, by your fruit, you'll know them. But the good grounds, they produced different measures of fruit. But can I just say, the person who produced 30 fruit, so 100 minus 30 means 70. So about 70, they hung on to 70% of their life. This is the way I say it. The produce person who produced 60 fruit, the difference between that and 100 is 40. So maybe 40% 40 of their life they hung on to. But the person that produced 100 they were full on for God. They just wanted to walk a walk, live a life that was pleasing to God, reading their Bible, they're praying, they love God, they want to be in his presence, they want to be in church, they want to be around the things of God, they want to grow in God. It's in their heart, right? And that's the kind of hearts God wants us to have, hearts that will press in after him. Praise God. So, so Jesus reveals the different kinds of conditions in the heart, the wayside, the stony, the thorny, and the good ground. And all these hearts, as I said, they hear initially, but because of their heart condition, very little word got sown, and so only no fruit was produced. Only the good ground produced the good fruit. So what is our heart like? Hearing God's word and receiving it into our heart is a heart condition. Let's just turn over to Luke chapter 11. And verse 27 and 28. It says here, And it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Now this lady calls out to Jesus and says, Blessed is the worm that bare thee, speaking of Mary, and the paps which thou hast sucked. But he said, now listen to Jesus' reply. He said, yea, but he said, yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. That means obey it. Do it. All right. Jesus wasn't emphasizing Mary. He was saying blessed. He wasn't saying blessed is Mary. He was saying blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. They do it. They apply it to their lives. And then we read what Jesus said to the Pharisees, who were the religious people of the day. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. And verse 47. This is just such a powerful scripture. This is what Jesus said to the Pharisees. He that is of God, he that is of God, hears God's word. You therefore hear them not because you're not of God. That really separates sheep from goats, doesn't it? The Amplified verse 47 says, Whoever is of God listens to God. Those who belong to God hear the words of God. This is the reason that you do not listen to those words to me, because you do not belong to God and are not of God or in harmony with him. All right. The religious people, they'd not been born again. They were just in traditions of man. 
And you know, believers, we are likened to sheep. And Jesus said in John chapter 10, just we're here in John, John chapter 10 and verse 27. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And the Amplified says, the sheep that are my own hear and are listening to my voice and I know them and they follow me. And we know that Jesus is God, the word made flesh and his voice is his word. And we are to follow the word of God. Why? Because it leads to heaven. Jesus said, follow me. Where was Jesus going back to? Heaven. Hallelujah. And in John chapter 10, speaking of the Gentile nations amongst us, just back in verse 16, John 10, verse 16. And Jesus said, this is and other sheep. That's us, the Gentiles. I have which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring and they shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. All right. Jesus is the one shepherd and believers, Jew and Gentile are meant to be all his sheep. But even Jews are to be born again. Praise God. Even this day, there are many Jews getting born again. And God wants all believers to be born again. And God, through his word and by his Holy Spirit, is going to bring about a unity in the body of Christ. And in John chapter 18, verse 37. And it says, we read what Pilate said to Jesus. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? And Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end I was born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Every one that is of the truth hears my voice. What a powerful scripture. Every one that is of the truth hear my voice voice. I can remember an example, um, the two men in church and the preaching had gone forth and these two men. And at the end of the meeting, one man said, wow, wasn't that a powerful word of God, the word powerful. And the other man said, what are you talking about? One man heard, the other man didn't hear. Different hearts, different hearts. <laughs> Nevertheless, we just keep putting the word out there. And, um, and I was going to say, you know, at different times, hard ground. And we did this. We did this a demonstration once we were in, in, in a Af meeting in Africa. And they have dirt floors, like hard dirt floors, because they've been walked on, walked on, like that hard heart, walked on, walked on hard. And got a jug of water. And when you pour the water on the hard dirt, it just rolls off, runs off. So you pour it again, still runs off. But if you just keep pouring, eventually it will soften the ground and then the ground will become so soft, it'll want to drink it in. And water's the word of God. And so if the word just keeps coming and coming, unless your heart's like concrete, if the water just keeps coming and coming, the word of God, it will soften the heart, it'll soften the heart, it'll soften the heart, soften the heart so that eventually It'll be good ground and the word will go in and it'll stay in and it'll be fruitful. All right. So the word of God has to just keep coming because it's alive and powerful and it'll do what it needs to do in each heart. We just got to be where the, where the word's being declared and God will do the work through his, through his word, by his spirit. But we've got to just be open. But also too, it's good if we've got a desire, Lord, change my heart, Lord. Lord, I want to be, I want to measure up to that hundred. Lord, I don't want to be a, a hard ground or a stony ground or a thorny ground. I want to be that good ground and I want to measure up to that hundred. All right. Don't settle for anything less. Go the whole way. Jesus went the whole way to reach you. Let's us go all the way to reach him. Hallelujah. All right. Um, so again, hearing God's word is a heart condition. So may our hearts always be soft. All right. The challenge is when God speaks, some people hear him, they hear the word, and they obey him. Some people hear him and do not obey him. They hear the word, but they don't apply it to their life. 
And some people, their hearts are so hard, they just do not hear. Just different hearts. All right? Some hear him and obey. Some hear and do not obey. So they're hearing the word. So that means they're in church. They're hearing the word, but no, don't want to do it God's way. No, no. What's, there's, there's something, problems in the heart there. And this person, they don't even want to hear God's word. They don't want to know that they're going to hell. They don't want to know. There are consequences. If we don't go God's way, there are consequences. All right. So, and we, Jesus gives a good example of this. Let's turn to uh, Matthew chapter 7. So, God is still looking for obedience to his word. And we see this Bible, Jesus teaching about the difference between the wise and the foolish man. Matthew 7, let's start in verse 21. And it, Jesus said here, Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Right? That's really clear. Some people think, oh, Lord Jesus, oh, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. But they're just doing their own life. Just doing their life. Oh, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. He just said, <laughs> they will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Verse 22, many will say in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works? That means they've prophesied. They're filled with the Holy Spirit in thy name and they've cast out devils. They know their authority in God and they've done many wonderful works, operating faith, miracles, praise God. Verse 23, and then Jesus says, I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Now here they were serving or doing great things, but it was all about them rather than out of relationship with Jesus. Because Jesus knows everybody. He even knows how many hairs are on your head. So what does it mean when Jesus said, I never knew you? They had no close relationship with him. Because God is love and he wants us, his people, his children to walk with, in love with him. We love him and if we love him, we will love his word because he is the word. Let's read on verse 24. Therefore, Jesus said, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon the house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that hears these sayings of mine and does them not, so both men are hearing the sayings, but this one does them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and they beat upon the house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Jesus said, not everyone shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of his father. And the will of the Father is shown in his word and it's revealed by the Holy Spirit to those who have ears to hear the word. And the difference between the wise man and the foolish man, one heard and he did it, he obeyed. And the other man, the second man, he also heard, so he's in church, but he disobeyed it. He didn't do it. You know, God's not going to put your arm up your back and twist you. To make you go to heaven. He, that's not who he is. He wants people to love him because they love him. Hallelujah. And, uh, and when we love someone, we want to do what's pleasing in their sight. It's easy. He jokes easy when you love him. It gets tough if you don't love him because it's all been, then becomes works. But, you know, we just want to abide in him and it just flows. Anyway, what tested the foundation of both houses? The flood. Why was there floods? Because much rain came. And again, spiritually, rain symbolizes the word of God, not the Holy Spirit. And we are in the time of the double portion of the word being given. And God's word is testing everybody's heart, the foundation of the heart. We're little houses, individually and collectively, we are God's house. And God's word is going to test what's in your heart. Whether you love God, whether you obey God, or you're going to miss out on everything. And God does not want you to miss out on everything. So whose choice is it going to be? Yours. But God loves you. And it says, um, uh, now let's turn to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. So we want to be in God and stay in God all the way to the end. Amen. And it says in Ephesians chapter 2, 
And you has he quickened, made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. All right. Before anyone gives their life to Jesus Christ, they are spiritually dead. And if a person is spiritually dead, that makes means they are spiritually deaf and spiritually blind because a spiritually dead person can't hear or see. Did you hear that? A spiritually dead person is spiritually deaf, spiritually blind, so they can't see and they can't hear. And Jesus said in John chapter 5, verse 25, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. Right? The dead shall hear the voice. There are people listening to this tape today and you are spiritually dead. And Jesus is saying to you, you need to be born again. You need to come alive so that you can hear and see spiritually. That only happens when you're born again. And Jesus said in John 3 verse 3, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Being born again, it's a spiritual rebirth. It happens on the inside. It's turning, to, turning away from sin, calling out to God, saying, telling him you're sorry, believing that Jesus Christ buy, paid the price for your sin and handing your life over to God and want to go God's way. And the voice of God is his word, and which is his Bible. And his Bible is spoken by his ministries. And when people hear God's word, they come spiritually alive. Hallelujah. So just ignite something in their heart. Hallelujah. And Jesus said in John 10, 4, And when he be puts forth his sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Do we know his voice? It's his word following we are to follow his word and there's a warning here in proverbs 28 verse 9 i'll read it he that turns away his ear from hearing the law even his prayer shall be an abomination if we turn away from hearing god's word the amplified says he who turns away his ear from hearing the law of god and man even his prayer is an abomination hateful and revolting to god how serious is that and there's another end time warning in Amos 8 verse 11, it says, Behold, the days come, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor of thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. That's the famine. And famine is a time of lack. And there's a famine of people hearing God's word. There's plenty of word available, but people need to hear. And the Lord desires us to hear his word. And do we have ears to hear God's word? And Jesus gives a warning in Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. It's a warning and a promise. Mark chapter 4 and verse 24. And it says here, Jesus said, Take heed what you hear. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that he shall more be given. Read it from the Amplified. And he said unto them, be careful what you are hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you. And more besides will be given to you who hear. So we are in the end times and all doctrine that we may hear needs to line up with the word of God. And we need to be a people of truth and not false doctrine. And the good news is that when we do hear the truth, more truth will be given to us. That's what Jesus just said. If we apply it, if we give ourselves to God, want the desire the word, God will give us more. Hallelujah. And in Luke 8, 18, and it says here, Similar, as Jesus said, Take heed therefore how you hear, for whoever has to him shall be given, and whosoever has not from him shall be taken, uh, taken even that which he seems to have. The Amplified says, Be careful therefore how you listen, for to him who has spiritual knowledge will more be given. That's a great promise, isn't it? And from him who does not have spiritual knowledge, even what he thinks he 
guesses and supposes that he has will be taken away. So are we hearing true doctrine or winds of doctrine? Let's turn over to 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. It says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we're exhorted to study all scripture in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. It's profitable for doctrine. And when we study from all scripture, it helps us to rightly divide the word of truth. We need all scripture. And in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, it says here, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. And the Amplified says, For the time is coming when people will not tolerate endure sound and wholesome instruction, but having itch ears itching for something pleasing and gratifying, they will gather to themselves one teacher after another to a considerable number, chosen to satisfy their own liking and to foster the errors they hold, and will turn aside from hearing the truth and wander off into myths and man-made fictions. How serious is that? And we are in the end times. And so that's already taking place. And so we need to have hearts. You know, Lord, I just want the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14 and 15, it says, That we henceforth be no more children, that's spiritual children, tossed to and fro, carried about by every wind of doctrine, but by the sight of men and cunningness and craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up, into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. You know, spiritual children, doesn't matter how long you've been in church. You might have been in church 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years plus. It doesn't matter how long you've been in church, but how much you have grown spiritually. Because some people can be in church for many, many years and they're still a spiritual babe. And so a spiritual child doesn't, a spiritual child doesn't know how to discern the truth. Is this the truth? Is this the truth? Why? Because they don't know enough word. They don't know enough of the doctrine. So meanwhile, as the truth is declared in love, we are, we'll be growing up spiritually into our head, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's got to be the desire of our heart that we would grow up spiritually. And turn back to John chapter 8. Jesus said here in John chapter 8, 30 to 32, it says here, And said Jesus unto the Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. All right, we need to know the truth. And then we read what Jesus said to the scribes and Pharisees in verse 47. As again, he that is of God, hears God's word. But you therefore hear them not because you're not a God. That's so serious. And verse 51, it says, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my sayings, he shall never see death. And the Amplified says, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, if anyone observes my teachings, lives in accordance with my message, keeps my word, he will by no means ever see and experience death. You'll just go straight. You'll just pass from this life straight into eternal life. So it's not just about hearing God's word, but also we are to continue keeping and obeying what God's word says. We are to apply what we hear. Apply what we hear to our life. Praise God. And when we hear God's word, where does he write his word? 2 Timothy chapter 3. Remember Moses, um, God wrote the Ten Commandments on tables of stone, but that's first the natural, but we are the living stones. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3, for as much 
as you are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, as it was in Moses' time, but in the fleshly tables of the heart. That's where God's putting his word, not in our head, in our heart. And so to hear from God, we need to be in the spirit, spiritual, born again. Our spiritual ears need to be opened. Let's turn to Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. You know, we see here the Apostle John, he heard a great voice in the book of Revelation when he received the revelation of Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 1 verse 10. And he said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. And the trumpet speaks of the word of God. And Revelation 4 verse 1. And it says here, And after this I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet, talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show you things which must be hereafter. Right? He heard the trumpet. Right? He heard the trumpet. Praise God. And Revelation 1, verse 3, where to hear and live. Verse one, verse, chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed is he that reads, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. And the Amplified, verse 3 says, Blessed, happy to be envied, is the man who reads aloud in the assemblies the word of this prophecy, and blessed, happy to be envied, are those who hear, who hear it read, and who keep themselves true to the things which are written in it, heeding them and laying them to heart for the time for them to be fulfilled is near. And also we know in Revelation chapter 2 and 3, Jesus says seven times when speaking to the fullness of the end time church, because there's seven churches mentioned there, that's the fullness of the end time church. And seven times to every church, the last words he said were, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Every said the same words to all seven churches. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And finally, we read in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20 to 22, it says here, this is Jesus saying, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, if any man hear my voice. And open the door. He's knocking on the door of your heart, not the front door of your house. He's knocking on the door of your heart. And open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcomes, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. God's voice today to his church is his Bible. The Bible is God's spoken word written down for the benefit of those who have ears to hear. And we need to have a heart with ears that hear God's word, right? A heart with ears that hear. It's all about our heart. We need to have ears that hear. And so in summary, with God's help, may we always have a soft heart and keep the door of our heart open and have ears that hear God's word and live. And everyone said, Amen.